Hello everyone and welcome to Claret and Booze. My name is Nick and this is my daily ramble. Uh, as always, if you're new to the channel, please subscribe and drop a like on the video. Um, you very poorly, Nick, today. I'm a bit, I'm a little bit under the weather. Uh, have been for a few days, but I'm, I'm powering through it. I'm powering through it. Um, right, what we're going to talk about today? Well, uh, David Moyes. Um, a lot of articles circulating at the moment in relation to uh, the future of David Moyes, whether or not he'll be offered a new contract. There's a lot of people that are saying that, a lot of his supporters that say he should be offered a contract at Christmas to extend it, you know, another three years, four years. Uh, Simon Jordan did a piece on TalkSport, which has been reacted to as well by the club via you know, Claret and Hugh, where they've kind of sort of dismissed Simon Jordan as, uh, you know, the man that that, that basically took... Crystal Palace down. I took him into liquidation. They basically dis dis they dismissed his opinion anyway. That's that's kind of the uh, the route that they took. So it was quite aggressive. It was quite an aggressive article. Um, and I also watched a um, well. I listen. I listened to another conversation as well. Um, in in relation to obviously David Moyes feels that uh, West Ham owe him a lot because he delivered our trophy, our first trophy in forty three years. But the rumor is that David Sullivan feels quite differently. Um, in terms of we could and should have sacked him probably at any point last season. And whereas Moyes feels like he delivered West Ham their first um, trophy in 43 years, Sullivan actually feels like he showed loyalty to David Moyes at a time when he could have sacked him. And instead, he delivered David Moyes his first trophy of his career. Both are probably true. Both are probably true. Let's face it. You know, nobody would have complained, you know, around about Christmas time if 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 Moyes had have gone, you know, complete completely the opposite. If you looked at the opinion polls back then, most people wanted Moyes out at that point. It was it was not uh, it was not a good season, but it all turned out well in the end. It all turned out well in the end. But what about the future? Well, as we know, Tim Tim Schneiderson, uh joined the club. He joined the club. Uh, Moyes had already built his backroom staff, his backroom team. He had, you know, his head of scouting, uh, Mick Doherty, his number two, Rob Newman. Stighton joins, obviously throws a cat amongst the pigeons. There's been a lot of back and forth um, in the uh, in the media. Some some pretty sort of snidey comments from from Moyes at times. You know, saying stuff like, you know, he's he's got to learn, he's got to learn about the Premier League. Tim Stighton, I'm talking about here, quite dismissive. Similar similarly to the way that he spoke about Noble, calling him an apprentice. You know, he he kind of goes a little bit passive aggressive, Moyes, doesn't he? With uh, whenever any of his his power is is kind of at threat, and. I think the first piece of the puzzle has moved. I mean, we started to see a little bit of a power shift anyway, because prior to Tim Stuyton coming in, if there was ever anyone talking publicly about West Ham, about the team, it was David Moyes. If there was ever anyone photographed with a player signing a contract, it was David Moyes. We started to see that shift over to Tim Stuyton, that side of it. None more so than just recently with Jared Bowen signing his new, new contract, and he sat on a table signing his contract with Tim Stuyton sat next to him, and then he goes on to talk about the projects, the future projects, which is why he's committed. Um, doesn't really go on to mention David Moyes at all, I don't believe, in that piece. Um, now, Mick Doherty, uh, who was a Moyes pick, he, like I say, the head of scouting, he's left by mutual consent. He's going to work with Atalanta. That's going to be a big blow to Moyes. But, uh, you know, like with Rob Newman, when Tim Steiton came in and he's, he's taking control of recruitment, then it kind of renders these guys' jobs null and void, to be quite honest. So the rumour is that Rob Newman will be following Mick Doherty out the door as well. So David Moyes' network of friends is getting smaller and smaller. Now, look, back when we won the Cup in the summer, if they were going to extend these contracts, they probably would have done it back then, but they didn't. Um, they left it up to him because the rumours were that David Moyes was going to leave at the end of the season, irrespective of whether he won that trophy or not. He decided to stay. The club didn't convince him to stay. He decided to stay on. So we've stuck with him. But we've started to build, you know, for the next stage, if you like, beyond David Moyes. That is, that, that's what's happening. Now, David Moyes could, of course, win a trophy this season. Uh, he could whether or not that would sway the board to offer him a contract, whether it would allow them to change direction. From what from what I can see, they 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 have changed direction now. You know, we're just kind of 
fitting the pieces together now. That's not to say that David Moyes couldn't go on long-term and work with Tim Steiton, but as we know, there's been a bit of a power struggle. We think it's written into David Moyes' contract that he has, you know, last refuse, first refusal, uh, sorry, the last say on signings and stuff like that. I'm pretty certain that if David Moyes was ever to be offered a new deal, the structure of that deal would be very different and probably not something that David Moyes would sign up to. I think he would be answering to Steiton. So if they were to offer him a new contract, it would be it would be your reporting to Tim. Tim is the boss. You're the coach. I think that's the way it would work. Um, would David Moyes sign up for that? You know, losing... We, we know he likes to sort of have a, a, a close-knit sort of team of people that he knows around him. They're slowly starting to be weeded out. Um, would he sign that? I'm not too sure. Uh, if you listen to his Diary of a CEO podcast that he did, he, he said he didn't agree with the director of football model in the first place. Now, he's tolerating it at the moment because obviously he's just won his first trophy. Um, but and, and we're do, and we're doing we're doing relatively well this year as well. You know, this, this the start of this season's gone better than most of us would have anticipated in terms of results, especially after losing Declan Rice. But that doesn't mean the guy's happy. It doesn't mean that long term David Moyes will want to stay. That's the other thing that people haven't considered because I do think that West Ham have changed direction. I think David Moyes is an old fashioned manager. He's an old school manager. He wants complete control. He is not going to get complete control at West Ham anymore. He doesn't really have it at the moment. It's kind of been weeded off of him already, which goes counter to the terms that he signed up to when he signed his contract. So that's probably pissed him off, to be quite honest. But look, times change. You know, we we didn't sack him, to be quite honest. We did stick with him. And although, look, going back to what I said earlier on, I do kind of believe in that sentiment. Although David Moyes delivered us our first trophy in 43 years, the the board sticking with him at a time where they would have been forgiven, would have been supported in sacking David Moyes, showing faith in him, they've helped deliver David Moyes his first ever competitive trophy as well in over a thousand games of, of top flight management. So I think both parties owe each other a debt of gratitude. I think it's worked. I think David Moyes has done a fantastic job for West Ham since he's come in. You know I don't I don't admire his style of football but I don't think he's a crap manager. I think he's good at what he does. I just think he, he gets you to a certain stage. And if you do want to move on, which I think you have to, you can't stand still in football, you, especially nowadays, you, you physically can't, then you have to move on. You have to move on and, and go on to go on to pastures now. And um, I don't know what's going to happen. I'm not, I'm not saying that David Moyes won't be off. I don't, he won't be offered a new contract in, uh, uh, in a new year. That much I'm 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 confident of. I, th- I would be amazed if they did that. Um, not just because it's David Moyes, but because it's something that they, they they typically don't do. They wait until a contract expires with managers and then they negotiate a new one. And to be honest, it does sound like there's some things written into David Moyes' contract that they would like to get expunged, removed. Maybe that's the only reason that they could offer him a new contract is to say, look, Dave, we'll offer you a new three-year contract, but we're stripping out all of your control measures that you had embedded into that contract of which he wouldn't sign up to anyway so it could be the case that they offer him a new contract but one that they know that he won't sign or will he I don't know because with David Moyes I suppose it's going to come down to the fact does he want to does he want to leave football maybe not you know um is he is he happy at, at, at West Ham in the area we don't know so I, I suppose it, there's going to be a decision for Moyes to make I think I think they will offer him a contract of some description, but what that contract is will kind of determine whether or not they want him to stay or go because they know the man. He is stubborn. Um, and like I say, he does need a form of control. He, he, he requires that. So, you know, if there, there might even be something written into the contract that would allow them to get shot of him a little bit easier as well. You don't know. You don't know. But it does look as though West Ham are definitely going in a different direction it's whether or not David Moyes can keep on doing what he's doing at the moment so he can kind of stay in favour because that's the first port of call that David Moyes needs to do he needs to keep winning um, if he does that then he'll he'll be considered for a, for a, 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 a to be offered a new contract I believe but then it's going to be down to David Moyes as to whether or not he'll accept these new terms that would be on offer to him which is something which is an environment he would never have uh, have worked in before you know even at Man United he had full control 
he cleared out. They, he was allowed to clear out the entire backroom team of an efficient winning machine, which is what Man United were, and replaced them with a load of people that weren't winners, you know. Um, so he kind of didn't help with that transition away from Fergie. He didn't. I, th- I think he's. I think Moyes has kind of proven that I don't think he's really geared towards the top jobs. I don't think he is. I think he's proved it at West Ham. He's got kind of a small-minded mentality in terms of the way that he manages his squad. He's got a start in 11. A start in 11. No rotation. Start in 11. Which means that by, by definition, you can't really attack competitions on all fronts when the games start flooding in. You physically can't. It's different now. The game has changed. If you look at Klopp, if you look at Pep, they're very different. They do things differently. They do rotate players. They don't drop them. It isn't the end of the world if a player isn't picked one week. Whereas with us, it's a very old-fashioned way of doing things, you know. Back in the days when you only had a squad of fucking 14 or 15 players and you had a start in 11, that ain't the case now. We've got massive squads. We've got loads of talent on the bench. If someone's not in form, you take them out, take them out the firing line, put someone else in, give them their chance. Um, There's also going to be other bits and pieces that will, I'm sure, be embedded into David Moyes' contract. I think he'll, he'll have certain goals that he will need to need to meet. If you if you listen to a recent interview with Thomas Frank when he was on Sky Sports, he spoke about the fact that he's kind of judged on a KPI basis, key performance indicators. So they score him and there's there's loads of stuff involved in that, not just his results, but you know, bringing through youth players, you know, um just just loads of different criteria through which the guy is scored on his performance. And I think that might be the type of thing that Tim Steiter would introduce to David Moyes. So it isn't just winning. There's, there'll be other bits and pieces on there as well, providing a pathway for these youth players that we've got already and that we're looking to bring into the club. So that's going to be massive and that's going to be a big sticking point for David Moyes as well. I know a lot of people have said, oh, why is he going to play youth this season? He's only got a year left. He doesn't care about youth. He's never really cared about bringing youth players through. We, we can all remember back to Elise sitting on the bench before he went to uh, Sunderland when we had no centre-backs available, that was his chance. Moyes snubbed him. Just went, nah. You know? He was uh, the, the, the star defender of our, of our academy at the time. So I think I think things things are going to change next year. I can't see David Moyes signing up to anything that he's uncomfortable with. I genuinely can't. Um, I think he's... Uh, yeah, he's like I say, I, I just don't think he can do it. I mean, he, he did try to change his style last year. I will give him that. He did. I didn't see it, but I think in David Moyes' mind, he did because he tried to get us to play a possession-based game of football. It was still defensive by definition because he wouldn't sacrifice the shape, the defensive shape, which means that you physically can't pass and move, which is why it broke down. It was never going to work. So it is that basic as well, to be quite honest, from what I can see, because to be a passing and moving team, you need to pass and you need to move. But if you move, then you can't have that solid sort of defensive structure which David Moyes craves, which is why it failed and why he's gone back to um, what he does best this season, which is why we're getting more results now, uh, because he's good at what he does, you know? He's good at what he does. Um, so, yeah, look, it'd be interesting. It'd be interesting. I'm just kind of... Um, let me know what your thoughts are, because a lot of people uh, would, would, would back him and say, yes, I, I want David Moyes here for, you know, the next four years. But I think you've got to separate the two. You know, does David Moyes deserve to be offered a new contract? Yes, in terms of what he's achieved since he's been here. But should he? Do you want to continue watching this style of football forever? Are there other considerations? Um, do you want to move on? You know, it, it, that's 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 what I mean. So it's, it's going to be... Not that I don't think the club will listen to what we say anyway, you know, whether on here or on Twitter or wherever else. If people are supporting him, they won't care. If people are against him, they won't care. Sullivan will do what Sullivan wants to do. And it does sound like we've set in motion a plan to change the way that the team and the club is run. And that's already started. We've seen it with Tim Steinton. You know, Tim um he's, he's, he's growing, growing in power within the club. So for me, and this isn't wishful thinking, by the way, my opinion is that unless David Moyes wins a trophy this year, I don't even think just qualifying for Europe, you know, top six, seventh, or even eighth this year is a possibility, depending on how the pieces fall. You could finish eighth and get into Europe. Um, I think he would need to win something to even be considered for a contract extension. But then that contract extension would still include 
elements that I don't think David Moyes would sign up to. So I do find it difficult to believe that David Moyes is going to be here beyond the summer. I think it will come down to David Moyes or Tim Steinton, and I don't think Tim Steinton's going anywhere. So anyway, look, that's it from me. Let me know your thoughts. Speak to you soon. I'm going to go back to bed. Come on, your eyes.